Good morning and greetings from what, when you hear this, will be day seven of my COVID isolation. I'm really sorry not to be with you in church this morning. Last Thursday, March the 10th, was Harriet Tubman Day. Harriet Tubman was born into slavery in the southern United States in 1822. And in a remarkable life of 91 years, she escaped slavery and subsequently made some 13 missions to rescue around 70 other slaves using the network of anti-slavery activists and safe houses known as the Underground Railroad. Harriet became a prominent abolitionist, suffragist and humanitarian and was even an armed scout and spy for the United States Army during the American Civil War. Historians speak of a period of transformation in Harriet's life, a point at which she recognised her calling to a very active sort of faith. In the words of her biographer, Catherine Clinton, to best fulfil her destiny, she realised she must actively seek a role in God's plan, rather than letting others dictate her path. She could no longer be a supplicant and trust in prayer for deliverance. She needed to combine faith with action. An amazing life and an inspiring story of someone going up against the brutal, repressive and unjust life into which she had been born. Someone who refused to be passive in her response, but who lived a life of active countercultural faith and ministry. That sense of active and countercultural ministry is reflected in both our readings this morning as well. These are two tough texts in which both Jesus and Paul use some really difficult language in challenging the worldly status quo. But then it is Lent. And what else should we expect from our lectionary than these sorts of passages at this time of year? In our Gospel reading from Luke 13, we hear Jesus lamenting over the city of Jerusalem and all that it represents. He recognises what Jerusalem has done to prophets before him, and he understands the suffering that it will inflict on him. He knows that Jerusalem represents the worldly sin that he has been sent to conquer. But despite that realisation, he still responds in loving concern as a mother hen would do with her chicks. And despite the danger, Jesus is moving inexorably towards Jerusalem and his crucifixion and resurrection. Six full chapters ahead of his description of Palm Sunday, Luke recounts Jesus alluding here very clearly both to his triumphant entry into Jerusalem and to his resurrection on the third day after his crucifixion. This is Jesus demonstrating that his ministry was active, countercultural, confrontational, and yet at the same time one of deep love, even for the city that was going to crucify him. And in our reading from Philippians, we hear Paul at perhaps his most confrontational as he lambasts the enemies of the cross. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. These are not words for the faint of heart. But when we look past the rhetoric something that's always important for us, I think, when we read Paul's letters. We hear Paul calling the Philippians to be imitators of him in being citizens of heaven. Now, remember, Paul is a Roman citizen and he's writing to the inhabitants of a Roman colony. And although he points in this part of the letter towards Christ's second coming, his overriding focus 
is on how the Philippians should live in that moment here on earth. As Tom Wright suggests, Paul wants his readers to think out what it means to give their primary allegiance not to Rome, but to heaven, not to Caesar, but to Jesus. And he goes on to ask, what would it mean for your church fellowship to live as a colony of heaven with the responsibility for bringing the life and rule of heaven to bear on earth? And I think that's a timely question for us to ask ourselves this morning on this second Sunday in Lent. And as we approach the second anniversary in just 10 days time of our first national COVID lockdown. Because I think now is a really important time for us to reconsider what it means for us to be church here in Wendover, for us to explore what we now might need to do a bit differently and what things we might actually need to get back to doing. Now, the last two years have obviously been a time of fear and dislocation. It's felt at times like we've been a church clinging to a boat in a stormy sea. Church has, I'm sure, been a massively important support for each of us as we've navigated this difficult time potentially with the risk that we've become too inward looking, too focused on ourselves and not enough on those around us. What can we be doing now, I wonder, to be more active agents of God's kingdom? How do we get back to doing what we Christians should be best at? Loving people, helping people and of course helping other people to love and help people too. And on a wider scale, I think there is more than just a sense of a global church that risks becoming more of an industry for personal salvation than a church that is actively building God's kingdom as a colony of heaven here on earth. As a part of our wider church, how do we step up? How do we do more of Jesus and Paul's edgy, active ministry? How can we be bolder and more confident in our faith and our ministry? How do we prevent church from becoming a Sunday morning consumer event rather than the open, uninhibited and very distinctive way of life that it is surely meant to be? And a bit closer to home. I wonder if our big and very capable clergy and ministry team and the energetic church wardens that we've been blessed with over many years have led to just a bit of passivity here at St Mary's. A sense that if something needs doing it's actually probably somebody else's job. Through all of these factors the impact of Covid the personalization of faith and the loss of community, the professionalization of our church life. Have we, I wonder, got into the habit of coming to church rather than genuinely being church? Now, these are hard questions, but I think they're important questions that we need to address as we hopefully step into a new post-COVID chapter at St Mary's and as we respond to a world in which what is happening in Ukraine looms so large. As a local church we have such an important role to play in our community and as part of a national and global church we need to show that active, edgy, countercultural faith that loves unconditionally and stands up to injustice wherever we find it. We need to be that colony of heaven. We need to learn the lessons of Jesus and St Paul and Harriet Tubman. Now to that end we already have a mission action plan, one that has exciting things for us to achieve in our ministry to children and families, in our pastoral ministry 
and in our community work but we need to resource it we have a wonderfully varied and nourishing worship but we need to resource it we have a fantastically missional shop on the high street and we need to resource it we live stream our services something we couldn't have imagined pre-covid and we need to resource it i could go on but i think you probably get the point over the years we've got used to church wardens who've taken on more and more mainly i suspect because they couldn't find people to take on specific jobs why i might ask is our church warden currently responsible for buying the church's supply of toilet roll because it has steadily grown over the years the role of church warden at saint mary's has become something that nobody in their right mind would want to take on and of course since christopher stepped down we have only had one warden in jackie making the role doubly hard and doubly unappealing so quite simply we need people to step forward to lead aspects of our church life Jackie is going to be stepping down as our church warden on May the 8th and so we now need to identify two people who are willing to become church wardens now given what I've just said I very much doubt that anyone is rushing to the front of the church to tell Sally that they'll do it which is why we're planning to change quite radically what the job of church warden entails to share out the tasks including the buying of toilet rolls and develop a church warden job description that is much more self-contained and much more manageable that role is going to include four key areas supporting the vicar and the clergy team encouraging the congregation obviously alongside others who do that overseeing services again with the support of the assistant warden team and some specific legal responsibilities what matt our treasurer uh, likes to call property and plate for all that to work we need two people to come forward for that slimmed down role of church warden and i want you to think and pray on it ask yourself could it be you could it be the person sitting next to you discuss it with those around you at church this morning and in the coming weeks and let Sally know if you're interested and she will happily discuss the new job description with you and of course we also need people to come forward to do some of the other jobs that we're going to be splitting away from the church warden role the assistant warden role will become more important particularly in helping to oversee services and we need to grow that team we'd love to have more volunteers to help with the maintenance of our wonderful church building we'd like some new pcc members and some members of our new pcc subcommittees including governance and finance people and our church building so we're going to be letting people know soon what all of those new or enhanced roles are and what they can volunteer to do and i hope that you will each prayerfully consider where and how you can serve we still need people to step forward to lead or help lead other aspects of our mission our ministry and worship whether that's playing a role in our pastoral ministry or our ministry to children and families in reading or leading intercessions on a sunday morning in helping out with our social media making tea and coffee volunteering in the shop stewarding eco church again the list goes on these are opportunities to serve but also opportunities to learn and develop in our journeys of faith and for us to pull together as a thriving church community now of course there's a risk at this point that this talk meets with rolling eyes and deaf ears there's a risk that all this is received as sansbury simply having a moan but i hope and i pray that you will each consider what you can do to help this church to be the beacon of faith that our community and our world 
need so badly right now. Because I firmly believe as we emerge from this pandemic, that this is a critical time for our church here in Wendover, nationally and globally. We have now to ask ourselves what sort of church we want to be. An active, thriving, supportive, growing, loving community that's building God's kingdom as a colony of heaven here in Wendover rather more passive, private, inward looking, shrinking church, focused primarily on our own individual needs. The choice, I think, is ours. Amen.